For the last two weeks, CNN has been investigating the U.S. military's final drone strike, which targeted a car in Kabul, Afghanistan, just hours before all U.S. troops were withdrawn. The U.S. military claims they hit a legitimate terrorist target. But CNN's investigation raises some serious questions about the U.S. government's accounts of what happened that day. And a warning to some of our viewers here. This report contains some very graphic scenes and may be difficult to watch. But first, live to CNN's Anna Corrin, who's been working the story. She is with us now from Hong Kong. Uh, so, Anna, what can you tell us? Well, John, look, there are serious uh, doubts as to whether, in fact, the U.S. military actually got the right target, possibly killing 10 innocent civilians. As you say, this has been a, a two-week investigation by CNN, and what we have learned paints a very different picture. <laughs> Screams of horror in a Kabul neighborhood on the last Sunday afternoon of August. As residents desperately try in vain to extinguish the fireball caused by a Hellfire missile airstrike. First I thought, this is an attack on the whole of Afghanistan. I did not know the attack was only on our house. The target, a white sedan that had been under US military surveillance for the past eight hours, according to a US official with knowledge of the operation. It had just driven into the residential compound with father of seven and NGO worker Zamarai Amadi behind the wheel. I saw my father lying in the car. There was shrapnel in his chest, throat everywhere. Blood was flowing through his ears. But the strike didn't just take out the 43-year-old father. According to the family, two other men were also killed, along with seven children, three of whom were toddlers. Our children were in such a state that we tried to identify them from their hands, ears or nose, says Zamarai's cousin. None of them had their hands and feet intact and in one place. They were all in pieces. Charred body parts, pieces of skull with chunks of hair and a foot melted into a sandal were among the remains taken to the morgue. Zamarai's two-year-old nephew lies on a gurney as a relative gently strokes his face. <laughs> Ten coffins filled with only partial remains. Their names written in black marker, the only distinguishable feature. Uh, we had very good intelligence. U.S. Uh, claims to have intelligence. There was explosive material inside the car that was to be used in an imminent attack on Hamid Karzai International Airport by ISIS-K. <laughs> Just days before, an ISIS-K suicide bomber had blown himself up at Abbey Gate. 13 US service members and more than 170 Afghans were killed. But for the past two weeks, CNN has been investigating the US military's claims about the drone strike, interviewing more than two dozen people, family members, neighbors, NGO staff and multiple bomb experts that paint a very different version of events. We've also been given access to the CCTV hard drive of the NGO office that day and reviewed all the footage. For 15 years, Zamarai worked as a technical engineer for Nutrition Education International, a US-based NGO that introduced soybeans to Afghanistan in 2003 to help feed the poor and reduce malnutrition. Uh, he is uh, always uh, caring for the people who are in need and then his a compassionate heart. The organization's founder says the Toyota Corolla Zamarai was driving belonged to the NGO, and he was responsible for picking up colleagues, distributing soybeans to Afghans in refugee camps, and running operations. US military officials have told CNN they had been monitoring chatter from an ISIS safe house in Kabul for 36 hours, when a car pulled out of the compound around 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. It was from that moment U.S. surveillance aircraft began following the car, not knowing who the driver was. But in an interview with one of Zamorai's colleagues who was with him all day, he claims Zamorai picked him up at about 8.45 a.m. And around 9 a.m., they stopped at the country director's house to collect a laptop to take to work. Because he forgot his laptop bag here, and uh, we took his laptop back. The U.S. has told CNN there was intelligence that the car was being directed from the safe house on a route around the city, instructing the driver to meet a motorcyclist, and that it did. Zamarai's colleague says after collecting the laptop, 
they picked up another colleague and then stopped at a busy cafe to get breakfast, claiming they did not come into contact with any motorcyclists on their journey to the office. The only motorcyclist they did talk to was the security guard at the NGO office, seen here with his bike on CCTV. For the next few hours, Zamorai and his colleagues carry out various tasks, visiting Taliban security stations for permission to resume operations since the Taliban takeover. They also visit a bank and return to work for lunch at 2 p.m. Around 2.30 p.m., Zamorai begins filling water containers to take back home to his family who have no access to running water, a task he'd been doing for months, according to his colleagues. They say they then helped load the containers into the car before leaving around 4 p.m. The U.S. military says around the same time, drone footage showed the driver loading heavy packages with other men into the car, which they suspected were explosives, possibly for the imminent attack. Colleagues say Zamorai dropped them off before he drove to his family compound, also home to his three brothers and their families. Around 4.45 p.m., the U.S. says the car arrived at a residential location and another male approached the car. The military claims it had reasonable certainty that they had a legitimate ISIS-K target and took the shot. It was only afterwards that the U.S. realized there were three children within the vicinity of the car. The family says there were actually seven. A U.S. official tells CNN there was a significant secondary explosion, possibly caused by a suicide vest or explosives in the car that may have killed the children. Two bomb experts we spoke to, who both viewed the same footage CNN filmed from the scene, say there is no evidence of a significant secondary explosion, stating there would have been major structural damage to the surrounding buildings and vegetation, and that the nearby SUV would have overturned. One of them noted if a secondary blast was seen from US surveillance, it most likely was the vehicle gas tank exploding. This over the horizon, having incomplete information, but conducting the airstrike anyway, this is the modus operandi for the US military now. And there's just so many risks and harm to civilians that comes with that. A US military investigation into the drone strike is underway. That at least one of those people that were killed was a ISIS facilitator. Uh, so were there others killed? Yes, there are others killed. Who they are, we don't know. But at this point, we think that the procedures were correctly followed and it's a righteous strike. A Pentagon statement released over the weekend defended the strike based on good intelligence, preventing an imminent threat, and that no other military works harder than we do to prevent civilian casualties. But many questions are being raised as to whether they got the wrong target. How do you know from the sky what is here, says Zamorai's brother. There were children in and around the car and you targeted them. Isn't it a crime? You came here and shattered our hearts into pieces. The following day, ISIS-K launched a rocket attack towards the airport from a Toyota Corolla. The attack was countered by the missile defence system. That same day, Zamorai's family buried their dead. <laughs> Ten graves on a desolate hillside overlooking Kabul belonging to a family demanding answers and justice. Now, John, we're obviously in touch with a family who are, are clearly suffering. They've had to change houses because of this link to the terrorist network ISIS-K. I think it's also really important to note that Zamorai had applied for a P2 visa to the United States for him and his family through his Californian-based NGO. This happened just days before the strike. This was a man who wanted to flee Afghanistan and start a new life in America. Yeah, so many, so many. And I thank you, Anna Karen, Dad Life for us in Hong Kong.